Okay, so I'm talking about the innervation innervation of the heart. Which basically means nerve supply of the heart. Um, it's really divided up in two. The parasympathetic, which I'll do in red. Pathetic. Yeah. And the sympathetic, which I'll do in green. Okay. With the sympathetic being afferent and efferent. Um, I'll mostly be talking about, aff about efferent today. And that is to the heart from the CNS. Okay, um, you can really think of parasympathetic as being sort of negative, and sympathetic being positive, um, in the sense that um, with the heart, parasympathetic will essentially reduce the activity, whereas sympathetic increases it. Okay. Um, a good place to start is just to draw the heart a bit or have a bit of an idea of where you, what you're looking at. So I'm just going to draw a very, very, very basic and quite inaccurate picture of the heart. So we'll divide it up here. So with this being the left, the right atrium, the left atrium, the right ventricle, and the left ventricle. And we'll just imagine it's very not much of a scale. I should probably make the ventricles a bit sort of bigger. Okay, so then this here being the the muscle and more in here being the chamber. Okay. Alright, so we'll we'll talk about parasympathetic first and its activities. So that works through the vagal nerve. Vagal. Okay. And um, where do these nerves go? Um, they go to the SA node and also the AV node. Okay. Um, or around that area. And that's where the sympathetic nerve endings are. And that's where they release their hormone. Now oh that's where the parasympathetic, the vagal nerves. Sympathetic actually go in different places. Alright, so it goes to the SA and the AV. So if you look here you can tell why the um, parasympathetic activity really has um, an effect mostly more so on um, the atria and the heart rate rather than the ventricular contact um, contractility. Okay, so when you have increased sympathetic activity it will activate these and they will release a hormone called acetylcholine I think is how it's pronounced acetylcholine or ACH okay um, so what does this do? Uh, this hormone uh, basically increases the permeability of potassium which is K plus um, it increases the permeability of this which increases the amount of K plus that leaves the fibers in this area so um, more K plus leaves more leaves. And what does this do? This makes the resting potential just put rest, resting potential um, more negative. Negative. And this is the effect to um, so because all this uh, positive potassium is leaving the cells it means that there needs to be greater amount therefore greater amounts of 
sodium and sodium and calcium required to make action potential so what does it do at the SA it mostly at the SA node it mostly decreases the heart rate because of its effect on there and it also affects the AV node um, and what that does is it slows the conduction of the AV node and it can actually slow it so much that it can also cause a block so the um, the cardiac impulse as it were um, actually cannot get through into the ventricles I'll just write can block completely therefore zero um, ventricular pulse okay in this situation where there is zero ventricular pulse um, the, ventricular, the ventricles are not pumping because of this AV block um, from very high parasympathetic activity um, what can actually happen there is the uh, a space in the Purkin G fibers Purkin G fibers can essentially um, make their own slow pace make um, will um, start firing or at least their action potentials will come out and cause a heart rate of um, between 15 and 40 from Guyton um, and that's called ventricular escape ventricular escape okay so um, if I, um, this block happens because of continual um, parasympathetic activity the percutive fibers can um, essentially take over as the new pacemaker and cause a heart rate of between 15 and 40 um, and that's called ventricular escape so that's quite important okay um, so that's the real basics of that um, and so I'll start talking about the sympathetic effects now okay um, so as I said before there's efferent there's also afferent which I might talk about if I have um, if I have time understanding the afferents is quite important for um, understanding cardiac referred pain okay on to the efferents um, so what happens here is that these are actually um, these nerves actually um, go through a lot of the heart and they're quite well represented in the ventricles as well as the atria uh, but quite in the ventricular muscle and just, uh, this is very diagrammatic but you kind of get the point very well represented in the ventricles okay and that's why your sympathetic activity can have such a huge effect so what happens um, your sympathetic activity is increased um, let's say uh, someone's running after you with a knife and you're trying to get away or about to fight them uh, you know, your sympathetic nerves are firing off very rapidly and this is conducted to all areas of your myocardium very much and what happens is it excretes the hormone noradrenaline noradrenaline and that has um the main effect that that has is to increase the cell's permeability to um, of increase the permeability of sodium and calcium so what does this do? Uh, for one it increases heart rate dramatically um, off the top of my head it can um, you know in say a healthy person it can increase it from say um, 
e.g. from say 70 to 200 sometimes more in some people if you know that or, or it might do it just 70 to 100 or 70 to 180 or 120 but it has the ability uh, to increase it very dramatically um, so that basically um, increases your um, increases the positivity uh, action potentials will happen much faster in the um, SA node and it will increase faster it will happen in the AV node as well um, you know they'll cross over from the atria to the ventricle faster because of this um, and all so that's essentially how that works um, it's a little bit more complicated but that's about that's the basics um, calcium itself also has the added effect of increasing contractility your myocardium and um, if I didn't mention it, um, this actually affects at the beta 1 receptors. So, and they're blocked by beta blockers, um, just as a side note. Okay, um, so that's really uh, the simple stuff for the afferent sympathetic. I'll, I'll talk quickly about afferent now. So, if you have uh, is ischemia, uh, is ischemia, um, or lots of waste products uh, that's going to stimulate the afferent afferent nerve fibers okay and they're all through the heart as well and that's going to stimulate them now um, so what's going to happen you know and uh, whether these afferents go, they actually go between T1 and T4 and sometimes 5. Okay, so that's what it does. It simulates them and that they synapse at T1 to 5. Um, now, because the body can't really sense pain in your heart, so to speak, um, has a very poor map of these structures, um, that's why you get your referred pain and it actually goes to your uh, more actually goes to your parietal structures um, so that's why we get if we think about the uh, other sort of yeah, outside body structures that your body's and your brain's used to dealing with that also um, synapse at T1 to um, 4 to 5 um, that's why we get pain in those areas so you, know, you get it pain in your retrosternum, so your chest Um, down your left arm, or right sometimes. You also, uh, it's common to get pain in your jaw and neck. Um, and some people say this is from your, from CNS crossover, uh, rather than your dermatomes. Um, Um, just a um, just a quickly summarize through the vagal that has its effects mostly at the SA and AV nodes and very little effects at the ventricle. Um, there you have acetylcholine increases the amount of potassium that leaves the cells in this area and makes it harder for resting potentials to generate. Um, it takes more sodium and calcium, um, and this uh, slows your rate at the SA node and it can also block conduction completely through your AV node um, so that's it for parasympathetic sympathetic very quickly um, efferent um, here these are uh, all through the heart very well uh, established all through the heart and they have a huge effect um, he releases noradrenaline um, that acts at the beta 1 receptors and that increases permeability of sodium and calcium increases heart rate and contractility uh, for afferent um, so if you have um, too much oxygen or waste pro uh, not enough oxygen or waste products um, stimulates the afferent nerve fibers they end at T1 or T4 or 5 and because there's the other areas that end at this um, that your body's used to feeling um, your sternum and your arms is why we get pain in those areas uh, so that's just a quick quick summary